Very nice to see you again. It's a Wednesday morning. This is your This Morning with Eamon and Ruth. Still to come. Now, one of Britain's best-loved men of rock, Simple Minds frontman Jim Kerr, talking to him about his 30 years on the road. Mr Phil Vickery, the chef, is going back in time to create some tasty dishes from the 18th century. Do you remember any of those, Ruth? <laughs> one or two, darling, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> but first, first have yes. you ever watched a sci-fi film only to wonder what would happen if it came true? I have. Mm. Many a time. You never stop watching sci-fi films. Indeed. From yeah. living robots to life after death. When it comes to the films, nothing is too far-fetched. But could these movie fantasies uh, one day become reality? That's a big question. And that's what our next guests are all hoping, actually. Uh, David Stiles and Ellen Clark on the end here. Now, they've uh, both signed up to have their bod bodies their put buddies. in... Their buddies. Their bodies mm -hmm. put in cryonic suspension. That's frozen to you and yes. I after they okay. die. OK. Now, but leading the pack here is Roger Eyre. Roger got into this many, many years ago. And uh, your late mother, Roger, is currently frozen. She, right, she's yeah. in him, and you she's hope to follow her. She's in America, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got Professor John Butterworth here as well. Professor Butterworth is an expert in physics, and he's going to be here to talk about the science involved in all of this. But, Roger, first of all, I think the reason I say you lead the way, not only is Mum already mm -hmm. suspended, as it were, uh, you watched a television programme many, many years ago with Alan Wicker. And yeah. you know what? I remember watching the same programme and it made a big impression on me, That's not right. quite the same extent as you, <laughs> but let's have a look at it and let's relive that now. Okay, great. In cryonic suspension, the body is preserved against natural decay. Every cell, every bacterium is frozen. You won't get better, but you won't get any worse. Then, at some future date, when science has learned how, you can be thawed out, diseased organs replaced and rejuvenated for your second life. And Roger Ruth was saying it's a bit like the freezer right in the garage mm -hmm. or something That's like right. that. that was it's, a bit more, it's a bit more sophisticated now, I must add. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the fact that mum, it's already happened to mum, um, does that give you um, a sort of emotional bond there? Does that make you believe or get through life thinking that you're going to meet up with her again at some stage? Well, stage's? hope, you know, living hope, dying despair, she always used to say, and uh, you know, you know, at least there's the hope there, the possibility. Right, whereas if she'd been cremated or buried in the, the usual way, then there's a zero chance of revival, whereas with this, at least there's a small probability. But it's not possible to be frozen and kept in this country. You have to go no, to America. It, at the moment, the facility, the long-term facility is in America, OK, mm. which is stored at uh, liquid nitrogen temperature, minus 196 centigrade. So uh, that facility is not available here. And, Roger, how much does that cost? Uh, well, the current price is, is um, well, from the UK to America, it's $165,000. My word. Right? So that's the maximum, right? That includes $15,000 extra because the transit to America mm. and so on. It depends on the exchange rate. You, you really would have to believe in this, my yeah. friend, I think, yeah. to make that sort well, of Well, yeah, but it's financed quite easily by life insurance. Really? So the, long, the, young, the younger you are, right, the lower the premiums. You can get good, uh, good well, rates. Talking of young, David and Ellen here, mm. I have to say, immediately I saw you, I thought, what would you in your tw early 20s, why mm. would two young people even be thinking about death? Uh, I've been hit by a car before now. I was fine. I, I, I bounced. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't too fast. But, you know, uh, have you ever seen the old uh, image of uh, the, the Grim Reaper? I think it's the, the dance of death or something like oh, that yeah, with all the different yeah. people of different ages and things. You know, death yeah. can reach anybody at any time. Mm -hmm. You know, I could uh, die in a nasty accident on my way from the studio today. And, and what are you two more fearful about? Dying or losing each other, or being apart from each other? Is that what you want to do, the fact that you've both signed up to this? Do you want to meet up again in the afterlife? I'm not really a person who's motivated by fear much. Um, oh, you know, it'd be nice to see you again. But it, it, David was already signed up to this when yeah. you met him. So has he persuaded you to do this? Did he Not really, ask no, you? Because I found out he was signed up for it, and I didn't know what it was about. So I thought I can't really, you know, judge it before I found out anything about it. So he gave me like a CD with some stuff on it, and I looked through it, and I thought it looked quite good. Wait, so, quite good. But how quite much good money have you invested in this? So what's, what are your financial plans of how to fund this? Well, life insurance. Um, my policy is £100,000, which overfunds by a great degree because it's only 35000 US dollars um, for the suspension. 
Um, it cost me six pounds a month, and then it's uh, 120 US dollars a year for mm. my membership fees. So all in all, costs okay. less than a pizza once a month. Really, all in all. Um, now you say you're, you're not motivated by <coughs> sentimentality or fear or whatever. So what are you motivated by? Why do you want to do this? Fun. I love life. Life is too good um, to stop living. Um, if I'm dead, I can't enjoy all the things that I enjoy in life anymore. So mm. some chance your of life, life must be more exciting more. than mine. I have to say. <laughs> you see, I would think we're talking fifty to possibly a hundred years on, where we don't even know that this technology will exist or will work. Right. So if some, if you know, sadly you were knocked over by a bus, as you said, leaving the studios today, then the, your team would spring into action. Off you'd go to America. They freeze you, put you in a tank. And then a hundred years on, a how do you know that they're going to defrost you? Who makes that decision? And when they do, it's a leap of faith. You won't know what life, what the world will be like. Who will you come back as? What, what will okay. your life there's be? A, there's a few questions in there. Uh, Lots of questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to I'm of another one. Will you well, have a job when you get out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's not faith. It's oh. scientific. Okay, it's scientific probability. Yes. Okay. Well, let's so bring not, in the yeah, scientist yeah. at this mm. stage, yeah. then, John. Uh, from your point of view, as a professor, how much faith do you have in the uh, in the in the science? Of I don't this? really operate on faith, and then this one is a very low probability. I would say. I, I think it's fair to say that scientifically you can't rule out that it'll work. So I think there's a non-zero chance that this may come off. But there are a heck of a lot of, of very low probabilities, I think. I mean, one of the things that fascinates me is um, we don't know how the human personality is stored in the brain. Right? Yes. So if you, if you unplug yeah. your computer briefly and put it back again, mm. the files on the disk are all still there, mm. but the, the programs that are running have gone and they're not back, they don't come back again mm -hmm. as they were. We don't know whether the human personality is, is volatile like that. So if the brain or indeed stops, the human it body, mm. it could be the reverse, Roger. Mm. It could yeah. be yeah. that your brain and memory cells will be taken out and put in a whole new body, maybe even a robot. Would that worry you? No, it wouldn't worry me. But uh, with genetic uh, research and stem cell research, probably a, a body could be regenerated from uh, stem cells that are existing in, in the brain. Uh, the recent research in Japan they actually um, uh, developed a, a mouse from a, uh, a cell, a brain cell, yes. that is still at minus 20 for 16 years. I think this you is see? the thing, right? That yeah. This is science fiction, and they will, not, not, mm. the, you know, the, the, mm. the companies who do this will acknowledge that, and mm. it's fair yeah, enough, it does, I think. Yeah. Mm. The question is, some science fiction was like satellites and robots, mm. and we, we see stuff mm. like that around now, other yeah. science fiction mm. like time travel and phases mm. and that, yeah. they're not around, and some of them are scientifically very unlikely ever to be. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of people making their mind up whether they think it's worth the investing the money in mm -hmm. such a low probability. Roger, the fact that your mother is in suspension now, can you or would you be tempted to visit her? Because presumably she will be frozen the way she was. Yeah, yeah, that's right. She's, uh, yeah, she's in situ, she won't change at all now, until she's uh, thawed out and revived. And would yeah. you be tempted to go and visit her or see her? Can or? you? Are you allowed yeah. to do that? Well, you can, but it, she's in a sealed container. Yes, I could actually see her. Yes. I could see the container in a, a big facility, like the old car I've got in America, mm. in Arizona, and um, she's preserved there in a big steel uh, d -wall. But you're not alone, are you? Because they have several bodies in oh, each yeah, container. Oh, yeah, they've got, um, uh, I think the total is 100 in suspension. Right, but in, in Dewar, it's about 12 foot tall, four on each Dewar. And uh, so it's, uh, I mean, obviously you can go and pay your respects and so on, but you can't yes. actually, it can't be opened. I understand. Sealed, you see. And can you choose, I mean, you know, like people have burial plots, yeah. you know, Eamon's family yeah. have got a plot with grandparents yeah. buried yeah. things. Yeah. Could you two, you know, could you, you could kind of reserve a, a tank together or... Could you be frozen together if no, anything that'd be, happened that'd be to you that'd be woefully impractical. Um, uh, they no, do have small provisions for... Um, storing a few non-valuable personal effects, but that's about it, to my knowledge. Mm. Have so you been to visit the facility? No, I haven't. It's no. on my to-do list, on our to-do list, I should say. It's on your to-do list. Can I, can I interface that? Actually, hey. it is possible, well, with my organisation, it is possible to be, I mean, they uh, promised me that I should be stored near Mum, and we will be, I've got, uh, in the contract, it says that um, she wants to be revived after me. So I'm there for her when so she's you're there to work out any problems That's right, for so I'm there she, first, so she's not yes. woken up. Yeah, I'm not there, because, you know, yeah. that was the last memory of me being beside the bedside. So hopefully the next memory will be when she wakes up, I'm there. And Roger, could I ask you about round your neck? Roger round his neck mm. is wearing a medallion. Mm. Mm. Now you're taking absolutely no chances at all. And indeed, yeah, and, uh, uh, <laughs> David's and, and got one as well. And a wristband as well. So just explain.